Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial. We are down to section 2.14, functions. Functions are incredibly important to JavaScript. It's called a functional programming language because functions are how we organize, document, control when our code is executed, and also allow us to reuse our code. Functions are incredibly fundamental to JavaScript. There are two common ways to create functions. Let's create them both ways and then learn how functions help us with these benefits. First way is called a function declaration. And I think this is the easiest way because it starts with the keyword function. After the keyword function, we enter the function name, get score, followed by parentheses. Now within the parentheses, we can add arguments, which are really just variables that store information that we feed the function in order for it to run. But we'll cover that in another tutorial. Let's just create a function that doesn't need additional information to run. The function name is still followed by parentheses, even though there's nothing in the parentheses because there's no arguments being passed to the function. And then all the statements that you want in the function are surrounded by curly braces. And so I'm gonna move that last curly brace below my entire statements and save. So I've got this switch statement that's being run by the get score function. Let's add that statement to get a score from a prompt back into the function. Let answer assign to prompt what was your test score. Now when I save and refresh this, notice that this prompt is not running as it did in the previous two screencasts. And why? Because it's protected with the function get score. So none of this code is going to execute until I run the get score function. And how can I run it? Well, I can run any statement in my console as a developer to test it, and we'll do that next. If I run get score from the console, now line 12 is prompting me for my test score, and I'll type in 80 this time and click OK. And then from line 18, my console log is be above average because my answer, which was 80, is greater than or equal to 80. But you might say, well, why would we want to wait and run the code later? Why wouldn't we just want to run those statements when the page loads? Well, what if we wanted to wait for our user to go ahead and enter 80 and 90 into these text boxes? That's going to happen after the web page loads. And there's no way to grab those two values unless we run code after the user has entered those values. And I'll prove that to you by creating a couple of variables here, let score one be assigned to document dot get element by ID. I've got this input box ID test one, and I'll grab its value. And then I'll console log out score one. And I'll do that as well with score two. So here we have two variables assigned to the values in these input boxes, and we're gonna console log them out. Well, I'm gonna save and refresh my page, and those statements are going to run Look at what my console is telling me. On line 11 and 13, where these two console logs are, there's nothing in the input boxes. At this point in time, I could type in 80 and 90. How do I then work with those values? How do I tell the JavaScript, okay, read those values now that the user has finished entering the numbers into the input boxes? That's where a function comes in. If I move these statements into the function, instead of this prompt, I'm going to say save, refresh, these statements have not run yet because they're protected with the function get score, but that gives me time then as a user if I type in 80 and 90 and run the get score function, the function is now reading what's currently on the web page. So if you want your code to run after the user has typed values into the input boxes, you've got to protect it with a function and then run that function after the user has typed in the values. Now I'm getting an error message here too, answer is not defined. So let's let answer, we'll assign that to score one plus score two, and we're gonna divide it by two for an average score. So I'm gonna save and refresh and test this out. Let's test some lower test scores. How about 70 and 80? And now that I've got the values into those input boxes, when I run the get score function, score one and score two are going to console log out the values that you've allowed the user to type in. So this code is protected by the get score function and doesn't run until I execute the get score function. 
Now, two things are probably in your mind. You're not going to want to run these functions from the console. This is just a developer tool to help you see how that function runs. Later on, we'll learn about events. We'll run our functions from events that happen on the page. The most common event is the click event, such as when a person clicks a button. But the other thing you probably notice that if I get a 70 and an 80, my average is 75. I should be coming in on C average here instead of A excellent. So what's happened here? Whenever your code is running but isn't running correctly, your best friend is console log to see what's going on. For example, let's console log out what answer is. Figure out why I am switching on this first case versus moving on down to 70. So save and refresh. I'm going to do a 70 and an 80 again and then run my get score function. And on line 18, when I console log out answer, it's 3,540. So yes, 3,540 is greater than 90. No wonder I'm getting it. A is excellent. But why is that number calculated? And this goes back to automatic type conversion and knowing that every value that comes off the web page, whether through a prompt or through an input box, is a string. So notice black, black, how 70 and 80 are black. So 70 string plus 80 string it's 7,080. So this part is concatenating two strings into 7,080. 70 string plus 80 string. When we divide it by two, the whole value is converted back into a number. 7,080 divided by two is 3,540. And that's a very large number that's going to be greater than 90. And that means we're going to get an A, even though we scored 70 and 80 on our two scores. So the moral to that story, I believe, is that whenever you're pulling a number off of a web page, either from a prompt or from an input box, and you want it to be evaluated as a number, go ahead in your code, parse int score one. Now I could use the parse int function around this entire statement, but that gets a little long, so I'll use a second statement here to say, score one, go get the textual value from this input box 70, and I want you to change yourself into an integer. I'm going to do that same maneuver on score two. Change yourself into an integer. I'm going to save this, refresh it, go back to test score 70 and 80, and then run my function, get score from the console, and see what happens. And yes, now I've got a number 70, a number 80 when I'm adding them. And when I'm dividing those two, 150 by two, I get 75 from line 20. And now 75 is evaluating true down here on case C, and I'm getting the correct answer average here if my two test scores were 70 and 80. But as I said, there are two ways to create a function. First is a function declaration using the function keyword. The second is called a function expression. And yes, there are slight differences between the two, but they're both very common the differences when you're learning how to create functions are really minor. A function expression looks like this. You create a variable name and you assign it to a function. So now get score is this function. And I'll call it get score to just to prove that it is a completely different variable name, but it works the same way. I'm going to save and refresh. Let's go back to 80s and 90s. If I got an 80 on my first test and a 90 on my second test, I'm in a solid B range. And when I run my get score two function, get score two is a variable name, but we must remember to run a variable that's actually assigned to a function, we use the parentheses. I see that my function runs exactly the same way. So function expressions are defined with the let keyword. Function declarations are defined with the function keyword. You need to be able to create and read both of them because both ways of creating a function are very common. One final word. Sometimes you'll see functions called methods. For right now, those two terms can be interchangeable. Both methods and functions are easy to identify because both of them are followed by parentheses. Generally, when we create functions, we call them functions. And why? Because we use the function keyword, both in a function declaration, it's the first word, and in a function expression, we use it after the assignment statement to say, hey, this is a variable name, it's really assigned to a function. We use the JavaScript keyword function in both methods of creating a function. 
But when we use a pre-developed function that JavaScript has developed for us, we generally call that a method. But as you can see, a method is run similarly to how functions run with parentheses. And if that method needs an argument to be fed to it in order to do its thing, we put that argument in the parentheses. Here's another method of the console object. Methods and functions, two words that largely mean the same thing. It's just that in the context in which they're used, we call user-created functions functions most of the time, and we call the methods that are packaged up in JavaScript methods most of the time. Thank you.